I just had a outstanding scientist on my podcast, and he's the world's foremost authority on the development of aggression, male and female, and there are different patterns. And so he was a Rousseauian to begin with. He believed that we're born good, essentially, and that we learn aggression through modeling, through all sorts of pathways, but fundamentally that it's learned. But he's com conducted studies for four decades, longitudinal studies with thousands and thousands of children. He like ate up 30% of the social science research budget in Quebec at one point. Uh, huge studies, and top rate. He won the equivalent of the Nobel Prize for criminology in 2017. And he had his view completely turned around. And so here's the facts. So aggression is there right from the beginning. So let's say that drive to power. And he defined aggression very specifically, measurably, kicking, hitting, biting, and stealing, which you can observe in children as young as two. The motivation for such things is there earlier than two, but children aren't very mobile before that, so they can't really manifest them. If you group children together in groups of the same age, the most violent people are two-year-olds, by a lot. Okay, but having said that, 30% of two-year-olds virtually are never aggressive. 50% use aggression some of the time, and 17% use it chronically. And they're disproportionately male, and disproportionately from families that are headed by very young, disturbed single mothers. And some of that's poor prenatal care in pregnancy, and some of it's postnatal lack of socialization. That, that's how it appears. And he's done intervention studies showing that if you support these women, that you can moderate that, that outcome. But we, we won't talk about that. Here's the crucial thing. Across the board, those three categories of children, nonviolent, sometimes violent, and chronically violent, across the board, except for the nonviolent ones, of course, because they're not violent, the level of aggression decreases with age, dramatically, even among the most violent children. So the fundamental consequence of socialization is peace, not aggression. Okay. The, there's a subset of the violent kids who don't get socialized by the age of four. They're much more likely to be antisocial, criminal delinquents, and long-term violent criminals. And partly that's because if they're not socialized by the age of four, they can't make friends. And friends are the fundamental, el fundamental agents of socialization from four onwards increasingly. And so if you get knocked out of the peer group because you can't reciprocate and use violence as a strategy, then you fall further and further behind and become more and more alienated. And so the Rousseauian view has its pluses because 30% of kids aren't violent at all. But the Hobbesian view, which is that we're born in a chaotic and aggressive state of nature, every dog for himself, let's say, also has its truth. But, but what's so interesting is that social... As children are socialized, the level of aggression goes down. Now, you see, if power was an effective strategy, what would happen is that the most successful kids would become more aggressive with time. And that isn't what happens at all. So we're way too complicated to only rely on ourselves. We're social to the core. I mean, and it's a tenet. It's so interesting because it's a tenet particularly of philosophy on the left, that human beings are almost infinitely malleable socially. So how can you believe that and also not believe that socialization is a main pathway to, to genuine authenticity? You can't believe, well, you can, because you can believe both of those things at the same time and nothing horrible will happen to you, but they're still logically contradictory. So no, we flower inside institutions. We're, they're not our enemy. It's a myth. Ben, it's a myth. It's the same thing. It's the tyrannical, tyrannical patriarchy killing the natural soul. It's like, yes, because every society demands its pound of flesh. And we're all crushed and bent and warped by our socialization insofar as it was based on deceit and power and, and insofar as our institutions were inadequate. That's true, but it's not, 
It's not enough of the truth. It's not enough. Look at our very language. Every word we speak was invented by other people. Every word we speak, we've agreed on the meaning. Everything we do is social to the core. That's not all our enemy. That's, that's a myth. It's Peter Pan versus Captain Hook. And Peter Pan never grows up. And the patriarchy isn't Captain Hook. Crooks are Captain Hook. 